hello and welcome to Board Game Co. I always get a kick out of doing... Why are you stealing my hello I, hello? When you're here, yeah. I get a kick. And to be fair, I know you do the same thing, so I have no shame in this or guilt or whatsoever. But just stealing your intro and calling it Board Game Co. Hello, uh -huh. hello, and all of that. So, today, what are we doing here? We are doing a review on your channel. Yes, we are. It's a review on my channel. And I'm a of, duck. And you're a duck. Yeah. Uh, this... We're doing a review of Bloodstone, yeah. which is the brand new Kickstarter title, Kickstarter exclusive Kick... title... Uh, important for you yeah. to put in there. It's not coming to retail. I have no idea if there's future plans for Kickstarter. That's a thing, but sure. I wouldn't rely on it. It could be, could if, be not. If we'll it see. does, if it does really well, yeah. Uh, I hope for expansions and upgrades oh. and miniatures and all of that. Yeah. Uh, but for now, this is a brand new Kickstarter exclusive title from Skybound Games. Uh, and, and it's a fun little skirmish game. This yeah. Is how do we a... how do we start? What do you what's no, your no, review so, format? So, so, so we usually... talk about. I go usually more into a bit of a how to play of the game, but in this case, generally when I do playthroughs with you, I just send people to the playthroughs. We have a Head lot on of over. we have a lot of content coming out. Yeah, and that's a good caveat to put in for this review. Uh, I am doing some sponsored videos, some yes. gameplay, and a preview to demonstrate and display, uh, you know, how this game operates and functions. And they're um, willing to pay yeah. me because I make things look pretty. That's right. And in my uh, case, I make nothing look pretty. Yes, but I do talk about games a lot. That's and true. People send me games to talk about those games a lot. And so they wanted you. To take a look at it. Yeah. Because you can tell the audience that it's honestly a lot of fun. And, and spoiler on this one, this one I actually have coming to me because of you. Because yeah. you played this game and, and I you said, were like, I know what Alex likes. He's and gonna like Alex this likes this game. You should send it to Alex. Yep. And they're like, okay, we'll take that risk. And they sent it to Alex. <laughs> and that's a risk that may or may not pay off. So spoilers. in this format, we'll do a brief surfer, surface yes. level overview of what this game Incredibly is. Incredibly surface level. Then we'll go straight into what I liked or what we liked, what we didn't like, and what we can see being a problem for others. And slightly adjusted for co co cooperative versus competitive because this game does have yes. both modes. Yep. And speaking of which, from there we can dive into the surface level. This game, Bloodstone, is going to be an arena skirmish game with co-op and competitive modes. Ultimately, the game comes down to having characters who have a set of abilities. You're going to roll dice every turn to deal attack damage. That Those dice you roll are going to both deal attack damage, potentially give you upgrades if you roll too poorly, mm -hmm. which is a thing in the game. Generally, if you roll too poorly, you get compensating factors for future you're stuff. You're always powering yeah, you're up. you're always powering up. And then, depending on if you roll singles, doubles, or triples, you will activate different abilities on your unique player boards. You're going to do that until all the other people are dead. Throw in some various things in the game, like giant spinning, rotating wheels of death that just go around slicing everything. There's modulars like yeah. you'd imagine in an arena combat game that makes things Wings of fire. a little messy. It's different things like that. And we only have two of the core creatures yes. or beasts. There's going to be a wide variety of them, and they'll include other supplemental and items. And speaking of which, that's going to be the cooperative mode. Because yes. once you're done with the competitive mode, or alternating, or who knows, whatever you want to do, you can play cooperatively with teaming up with other heroes and taking on the big bads of this world. And here's the thing that I know all of your audience is waiting to what? learn. What? You what? see, Bloodstone is going to be focused on or inspired by the idea of this gem hanging around the queen's neck there. You can see her on the front of the box. And the Bloodstone itself is this uh, powerful, magical item that not really is not really controllable by any one person. Sure. So she is imbued with the power of it. And it is soaking into and stealing life and resource. It demands battle and combat and blood. And as the combat happens and you're ripped apart, sh you know, shred to shred, you then can rejuvenate here in the center and face off in a cooperative mode when the audience so gets bored and cheers it's start funny screaming. Flavor text has traditionally not been a part of my uh, focus. But and it's so it's, important in this it's one. It's making me think. I have a category for what I liked, mm -hmm. didn't like, can see being a problem for others. Yeah. I don't have a category for what I can see others liking that yeah. I don't. And in that case, I guess we'll just throw it's that a in good right news. now. It's a good good thing I'm here. It's a good thing you're here. Because flavor text in this game, not world only... World building. More than just flavor text. Yes, world building, World building profiles. in this game has not only established the mechanics, the lore, the characters, the creatures, but, in, but the reason why mm -hmm. I think it is such an important tool when designing a game is because the deeper you can get into what is happening here, the more cohesive the mechanics and the utilization of your powers feel. Sure. Everything to me f here feels stitched together. And it's because... Including can, Malvara. Yes. And it's because <laughs> I can tell you the story of what's happening in this scene, in the arena. It's not an ambient gladiatorial pit. This is a living world with a novel 
coming out next to the Kickstarter. Yeah, and I just want to explain my joke for those who don't get it because I thought it was hilarious. When you said everything stitched together, Malvara is literally stitched together from the bodies and things of he's, various other dead people. He's, he's a demon creature that, you know, is risen from uh, a great iron rusty gate uh, that marches forward and as you start looking at him, you notice bits and pieces of the fallen heroes that uh, were not rejuvenated or brought back to life. Uh, here in the arena. And so that competitive mode, cooperative mode, that cooperative mode is going to have different bosses you're fighting against, that you're teaming up together, you're going to have a slightly different deck of cards, a slightly different player board, just to modify abilities that make more sense in cohesion, and then you'll take on the specific boss with their specific differences, and each boss is going to be drastically different. Yep. This is not like, this guy has this ability and 14 extra health, it's completely different game-changing ways of approaching the battle, different puzzles to figure out as you try to tackle those unique challenges. And an important note for the player versus player as opposed to the cooperative player versus player can play uh a lot of people on the table yes. i'm not sure what the number is going to be on the kickstarter but i know it's a significant amount yeah. it's a minimum of four it's probably high. it's higher than that. No, no i know it's higher than yeah. four yeah uh, but the thing that is interesting about that is instead of a head-to-head -head combat game there enters in a degree of negotiation a degree of working together uh cooperatively punching someone in the face and all of you at the same time are escalating in powers and abilities yeah so and speaking of which, I guess I'll take the start of that because you said something that is very I said triggering. powers and abilities. What I like about this game. Let's start off What with you that. like about games in general. In general. Yeah. In general. This game, to begin with, the very first thing I'm going to say with what I liked is going to be what you just said, which is those powers and abilities. This game is going to have... Each individual character is going to have four different powers they can utilize. You're going to have a hand of cards that gives you slight augmentations to what you can do, different things, different whatevers that you can add to your pool. You're going to have a deck of cards that you can slowly level up your character and add increased movement, increased you know, responses to damage, increased defense, increased things, everything like that, whenever you miss. Every time you do not do enough damage in this game, you're either going to add a blood energy to your pool, or adding more to your ultimate, mm -hmm. unlocking your ult, or adding just more damage, which gives you more damage, and gives you more of a chance of hitting doubles, triples, or whatnot. Everything in this game is focused very much around powers and abilities, and that's going to be, well, the first thing I like. I mean, for me, it very much ties to some of the best parts of a game called Dice Thrones. Yeah. Which oh, is, very much so, yeah. Which is a dice-rolling, powers and abilities-focused game, except here, you take that, you add a bit of chaos, and you stick it on an arena grid, and in my opinion, it does it better. Yeah, well, not, not to... I mean, Dice Throne's great. Dice Throne is No, it great. is great. No, I do like the arena element being added in. And, and from there, my second thing, well, do you, what, do you, what do you have? Uh, what do I have that I like that you about like this with the game? game? It's going to be that. It's going to be one of those elements that I already talked about, uh, which is going to be the negotiation that happens when you're playing a higher player count. Okay. I really... I have a lot of nostalgia for arena combat games, but one of the things that I've always felt fell flat in them is when you when you watch like Gladiator the movie and you see the conversations that happen or it's one versus all or it's a group of people around the you know around the arena uh, investing in and, and trying to choose what is going to be the most tactically advantageous thing to do mm -hmm. having an arena full of players uh, all of which are doing crazy special abilities and firing bow shots at multiple people or choosing to aid and help or yeah uh, and I like clear, that when you say aid and help it's not that it's a cooperative experience no. at least in the competitive but rather when you see that that person has 120 health and the rest of us all have 40 someone's gonna get hurt real yep. bad yep. yeah yeah I I very I very 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 much like the co cooperative or not the cooperative I very 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 much like the, the higher the, player the counts pvp yeah i like the negotiation that happens above the game state yeah absolutely and that's a good point as well i mean in general the game is going to specifically that competitive mode is going to be played better at higher yep. player counts it does play fine at two i've played it at two it's totally fine in fact two was the thing where i said i want this game like, sure i want to play this i did game. too i did but... too with the knowledge that i thought i would love it at exactly. three and four yeah i thought two, i said two is likely the weakest player count and i already enjoy this game so so let's let's, let's do stuff so that's going to be that. Uh, the art and miniatures. This is going to be the closest I come to your world building and stuff like that. Yeah. The art in the game is Beautiful. straight up gorgeous. The first thing I saw uh, on Facebook maybe a year ago, I saw some art for the game and I was like, I am interested in that because it looks pretty and pretty things I mean, are nice. Look at that terror of the Everwood. Yeah, that's going to be that impressive. That burbilous, grotesque creature. I mean, that's this guy right over here. He's he's not unimpressive both in art the miniature and miniatures. Awesome. I, I may ask... James, if he can cycle this back my direction yeah. so that I can do a painting video on that bird. Oh, that'd there. be great. Yeah. Uh, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. 
Yeah, and, and it's worth noting if you, they get un, X amount of backers in the mm. first two days or some sort of thing, they're going to have some sort of trigger. I don't know exactly what it is. Then you'll be able to unlock sun drop shading across all the miniatures. Here's here's the other, which is really cool as well, yeah. but here's, here's the other important thing for me. I'm not a fan of miniatures when they don't utilize, when they're not utilized for a reason in the game. I mean, this is an arena combat game. They're utilized all for of, a reason. That's what I'm saying. All of the miniatures in this game not only are impressive mm -hmm. and stylistic and have character and lore and, and great action poses to them, but I use them. Yeah. I use them. I use them for the experience, and they make the experience better. Yeah. So, people Next, people sometimes, like, flag miniatures. It's like, I don't like miniatures across the board. And I'm like, no, no, no. I like miniatures. I love miniatures. I just want them to be utilized. Yeah. Uh, the next thing for me is going to be, and I talked about this already briefly, I love that when you miss in this game, it's just still a constant cycle of Always upgrading. powering up. This game is escalating every single time. That's going to be true both in the competitive mm -hmm. as well as the cooperative. The game is always powering you up. There is no point in time where you're like, well, three turns went by and we did nothing. No, yes. no, no. If you do nothing, you're getting stronger next round. You're getting stronger and stronger and stronger. You're escalating towards your ult. You're escalating towards more damage. You're escalating towards additional abilities that will cooperate, that will compensate for a poor roll. I love that the game is constantly pushing you forward and never feeling yep. like you had a bad turn. And paired with that, I like dice games. I've been thinking yep. about this more and more recently because there's the question of don't dice games introduce a degree of luck that make the game not fun when you can't when luck works against you? And no. For me, the, all, a lot of my favorite games are dice driven or luck driven for the reason being that one of our gameplays so accurately actually both of our gameplays yeah. so accurately demonstrated so go check those out is that highs and lows when luck is introduced alongside strategy in a responsible way highs become higher and lows become lower legitimately watch the gameplay of the terror of the everwood on quackle's channel you don't even have to watch the whole thing. It's not that long. It's like, what, 50 minutes? Someone that There is a mathematical improbability there. Impossibility. That's not true. It's not impossible. Impossibility. It is, watch the first 10 minutes of that video. Trust me on this and watch our faces. <laughs> we legitimately do not know what is happening. It is unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's insane. And it gives you those highs. It gives you those moments. But luck has to be mediated with responsible strategy, with escalating powers, with a degree of control. And that's where the other thing that I really I like have, comes I have in. the cards in my list too. You want to talk about them? No, no, go for it. You do it. You do it. These cards are going to be the way that you trigger your actions in a Mage Knight sort of way where you're selecting what order you want to go in association with what power you want to play. Yeah. And you have to play them all out of your hand throughout the course or sequence of the game. In player versus player, it's going to determine who's acting first uh, and the hierarchy of turns. So we have one through four, five, and six here. Uh, and there's another character that actually gets to soup up and build yes. their deck as they play, along with, as you play the cooperative, this deck gets customized and built as well with some modifiers as you gain experience and level up your characters. Yeah. This gives me control over the turn sequence, over the luck, over the... This counterbalances the fact that I'm rolling dice on my attack. And you haven't even talked about my favorite part I of this. Because I choose what I get to do. Is it going to be the fact that you can discard it's some? It's going to be the fact that you can discard some. Of course it some. is. Some of these cards, the multi-use aspect of the cards, you have these six cards, or again, some characters are a little different, but in addition to playing them for your initiative, for your ability, many of them have an exile ability. When it's in your hand, you can say, actually, I'm reducing that damage by 25, and this card has permanently removed yeah. my game. It's again, it's just more control, and more options, more things to be aware of when you're planning for how to and play. in cooperative it's interesting because there is if you're playing with three players or so in cooperative there's yep. a little bit of a programming or sequencing where yes. you can't share where you're going but if i go i'm going early you go i'm gonna go try to go middle i'm going late yeah then if we play correctly you kind of get that battle engine revving up where i hand you dice you hand the other person a special ability i punch one you cut one they stab right it, yeah. it just it scales nicely Absolutely. Uh, past that for me, I'm just going to have for the variety of characters and the variety of boss encounters. Mm -hmm. In the sense that each character very much does feel completely different. I've They're played all them all. Dice. I have played... I, I have not played uh, Zvrak. I've played all the other... Uh, all. i played three of the other characters. I have not played Zvrak. He's each potentially one... the most straightforward. Additional really? damage and D20 gets added. Could be. Okay. Yeah. He's but just a heavy hitter. All of them are just fun in vastly different ways, and they feel different. The archer feels like an archer. The mage feels like a mage. The rogue feels like a rogue. Mm -hmm. Vrak, I haven't played, but I'm sure, I sure, I am sure. Feels words. like a butcher. Vrak feels like a butcher. Yeah. And then the bosses are going to be completely variable as well. Again, we've only had two of them. We've played both of them. They are completely different experiences and puzzles to fight against and the challenge they are presenting and the whole feel of it. The variety of this game is going to be huge mm -hmm. for me. I don't like it when you get... 
I mean, I do like it because I like miniatures and characters, but I don't like it as much when you get 15, 20 different characters in a game, all the same. and they ultimately feel yeah. the same. The One of the last things that I want to bring up yeah. is going to be the fact that during the co-op game, mm -hmm. uh, you can not only transition from PvP to co-op very naturally and organically, yes. you shove someone in the face, kill them, and then wipe out, and then you go, oh, let's reset, and very like within 60 seconds, mm -hmm. let's build out a PvP, or a, a, a co-op arena. But along with that, as you defeat bosses, you're going to be unlocking different things that integrate into your core system. This is my last thing, too. Bring it up, then. So, so this is going to be uh, your... Well, no, you focus on how it's coming in. Mm. I'll focus on the things. I didn't care about that. I am, yeah. So yeah. I'm focused on how things are integrating. So as I play through a cooperative experience, I will be getting different fire abilities and tokens and, and idols and all of that through a series of cards uh, and customized little gear and items yep. that you get from different characters... All of that starts integrating back into the player versus player arena, which you could just open all the packages and claim it all for yourself. But That's no fun. the fun of it is we just experienced something. Yes. And now we're bringing this back into our player versus player like experience. The idol, puzzle we're we just, solving. We just dealt with the Burbless Beer becomes be so a cool. PvP element that sits in the arena slowly spreading damage while we try to stay away from it. Yeah. It is entirely and it changes, changes the entire yeah. hexagonal pattern of this. And so that's going to be my thing. Not so much the integration, which I do like, don't get me wrong, but for me it's just literally just the fact that the arena constantly gives you different challenges. You can, you can play with one challenge, you can play with three challenges, whatever you're comfortable with. You can mix up the different different things that make the game different gives you a reason to move and in skirmish yep. games i hate it when skirmish games are just like let's just close the distance and attack each other this game gives you a reason yeah. to move from the giant spinning wheel of death that will roll a die and every small mm -hmm. round starts slicing people up to the, a rusty bucket of weapons that gives you yeah. a bonus two dice that can supplement or potentially unlock yeah. your alt and these are going to be on different sides of the arena you have to go back and forth between them from that idol that's going to be spreading damage from this giant ring of fire that's swiveling around the arena in different ways Every single one of these different things is going to shift up. And also, also rules changes, like King of the Hill, where yeah. the strongest person in the arena, you, when you attack him, you get extra dice uh -huh. to attack him. There's going to be different things that constantly mix up the arena experience, changing both the puzzle you have, as well as constantly giving you a reason to move. And like I said already, it's as if they created a game. They did create a game. I know. Yeah. I know. That's basically, but it feels like a game. It feels game. like they went, well, what would be fun in an arena? The stuff that I like. And then said yes. You know so I was literally getting the rules teach for this game, and I was like, everything I see here looks great. I just don't like the fact that it's a giant open arena. And James is like, aha, <laughs> we have things for uh -huh. you. And like threw this around, and just it, it was, yeah, I mean, that, that was my biggest concern about the game. Here's the interesting thing. Here's going to be the last thing that I like. Mm -hmm. uh, this game demonstrates why I think world building, lore, flavor text is so important. Okay. when designing a game and establishing the mechanics of because? the game. Because they've created a game that has fun, crazy, powerful abilities, allows you to level up, keeps escalating you know, power and, and, and fun, sure. and still kept true to, and everything feels integrated into the thing that I care the most about, which is the story and the nature of the game. There are okay. a variety of games out there that give you powers and abilities that don't match me. And there's a variety of games out there that tell me a story that don't match you. Sure. And I find it interesting that this is one of those that has hybrid that so well that both of us are excited genuinely about different elements yeah. of the game. Yeah. Yeah. Which brings us to the category of what do you not like about this game? Yeah, that's a hard question. Well, I have stuff. Do you have stuff? Uh, I will have stuff. Okay, so... It's genuinely a hard question. I've enjoyed... Yeah, but there's always something. There's there is always something. something. And to be clear, neither of these things invalidate the fact that I like the game. But they certainly are things that I... I get a little All bit right. of that at uh, moment. I'll, to I'll toss one in. Go ahead. Do yours. And I think this is probably on I your list. I only have two. I only have two. Okay. I think this is probably on your list as well. I enjoy this game the most at higher player counts. Sure. Uh, it's not that I don't like it at two, but it is certainly not my favorite way to experience it. Now, co-op was fun at two, but even co-op, I think higher player counts are going to be the best. Sure. Along with that, for me... We did just have a great time playing co-op, though. Yes. For me, <laughs> PvP is still going to be where I think I have the most interesting experiences while co-op is a fun and interesting puzzle uh that that last gameplay though has swayed me a little bit on it, that so it's good so it's good so, <laughs> so so first of all the player count thing i do plan to touch upon but yeah. i have that more in the what i see being a problem for others because for me that's just a it's not that i don't like this game it's just that be wary of the fact that it doesn't it's not going to play as well with two as it will with three because four, the dance five. between multiple players yeah. is where a lot but, of our favorite part. If I want shine. a two two to head, two player head to head game, I'll pull Super Fantasy Ball off the shelf. I love sure. that game. This one will be the game where I, where I where like I have three people at the table and they're like, "Can we play Super Fantasy Ball?" And we're like, nope. "Oh, that's a two player game." But wait, 
I have Bloodstone. Yeah. So that's just going to be for me a situational thing, not what I don't like. But the second thing you said, hmm. that cooperative versus competitive, while I do like the cooperative, and while that second game was a lot of fun, and the first game was a lot of fun too, I yes. will say that the swinginess of the cooperative mode, or the feeling of being either crushed or crushing the opponent, that in a cooperative game is always going to be harder for me. I've consistently said in games that I want to feel when I'm playing a game, that when it's a cooperative game, that when I win, I want to feel like I could have lost. And when mm. I lose, I want to feel like I could have won. That second game The second game did that. that. The second we game lost, did that. Spoilers. We lost, but we very much felt like we could have won. The first game, we kind we of crushed. destroyed we the crushed. opponent. We crushed. Yeah. But here's the interesting thing. And I think you're right. I think it's because you get so powerful and so much abilities and everything escalates that if one of you zooms up ahead of the other person yep. and you don't mediate the degree of risk, that could happen. I think the range is wider than maybe we would appreciate. Yep. But it's, I don't... It's the range. I don't know... I don't know that I want it brought down. I have no... no. I'm, so I'm not looking yeah. for tweaks. Yeah. I'm not looking for tweaks in the yeah. slightest because... The game is, is fun. I'm not saying I'm not against tweaks, but I'm just not looking for them. The game is fun. The game is enjoyable. But I certainly would want to call out that I have enjoyed every single one of my PvP mm. games. And I've enjoyed my cooperative games. But the first one, I would say less so. So that's going to be my first thing in terms of what I didn't like. And again, it's not even didn't like. It's just liked less. I, I have I have a thing that I, I'm looking for sure. that I, I don't know yet. And I'm excited to see when they launch the campaign page. Something that I think people should go check out. Mm -hmm. I really am interested and I want to see... What other what other uh, co op experiences there are? How yes. wide that story goes? If there's a progression to the story, which we seem to have indicated on the cards mm -hmm. that we've been given on the prototype, I also though want to understand what other items are going to be available. I want I I kind of want selfishly a bucket of like special trinkets and items that go down onto the board that start changing the interaction of the table. Yeah, I mean I like anything so. that changes up the variability. Yeah, and for me I have one other thing that falls into the don't like category, and again it's not li like it's like less. Which is, I, I love these cards. I, I love the strategy they add, the exiling them. I love all of that. I kind of want all of them to feel fun. And in reality, I would say when playing this game, usually about, like, they, they feel more situationally fun or some okay. of them feel consistently fun. Some of them are very situational. Sure. I kind of just wish the cards had a little bit more powers, a little bit more abilities, maybe a little bit more exiles across more of them. It's, it's the, when I'm looking at my hand of cards, they're good. But some I like more than others, and I, I wish there it's were a little as, more. There's not as much crunch when it comes to what you're picking. Yeah, as you you want to, you want to have three that would be great to use. Yes. and you can only use one. I would say I rarely felt uh, I rarely felt torn between more than two cards. Hmm. It's always like, well, that one's going to add a good early ability. That one's going to add a good late game ability, and this one kind of doesn't really do anything. But at least I get to attack first. They're good. They're mm -hmm. fun. They add strategy. I wish they were more in the cards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's my other thing that I wish I saw more of. Anything else on your end or? I, brothers. I don't, I genuinely don't think there's anything. Well, it's I, a good game. It's a good game. I mean, we'll get to the yeah. problems for others category shortly. Yeah. You done on your end? Uh, for, for myself, I don't think there's a lot of other things that I can okay. do on. Category three. What can we see being a problem for others? And I know we share some notes here. Yeah. Because the first one's going to be pretty obvious. Yep. Go for it. It's a dice chucker. It is. I mean, the if you, RNG if you is can't, crazy. yeah, if you can't, you know, if you can't stomach the fact that someone could roll a good sequence of dice and go Followed from... immediately by a terrible sequence of dice. But just go from doing potentially 20 damage, as far as you understood it, if you were going to, like, the hard math, yep. and they roll the right sequence that upgrades them to 70, 80 damage in a single swing, you have to be able to enjoy and laugh at that. Yeah. Which we both do. We do. But I do know players who don't. Yeah. I mean, if you're sitting there in an arena game and you get stomped because somebody rolled better than you, that might just feel frustrating. Yeah. If you came to the table to win. Yeah. I don't play these kinds of games to win. I play these games to for the do story. powers ab to do powers, abilities, and have fun oh. attacking each other. Yeah. Whether I win or lose is not why I play these kinds of games. Any game I don't play to win. Yeah. But some games, more like heavy Euro games, those the process of trying to win is more important to me. The process here is having fun, doing cool things, and yes, rolling three ones at the same time. The other thing that I think might make this game wrong for some people would be if you are really excited about the PvP, but have no interest in the co-op, or you have no interest in the PvP, but enjoy the co-op... Then you're getting half a game? I, it's not half a game, because it does okay. integrate to a larger degree, but I think this game really is worthwhile and shines on both fronts. Sure. I would feel like I was... When I get that core box in, or even this prototype, mm -hmm. I feel like if we were covering this from a co-op stance and not a PvP stance, or a PvP stance and not a co-op stance, 
we really would be missing part of what I think makes this game shine. Yeah. The degree of fun that I'm having is the fact that those experiences can be variable, they can change, and that I can approach this with different game groups. Yeah. If I only want it for one of those two, I would I would take a close look at whether or not it's the right fit for you. Yeah. Yeah, and for me that's gonna be the player count aspect, which you touched upon already. That aspect that this to me is a great game, the player count is something to be aware of. Mm -hmm. Meaning if you're playing this game at two players, I would say my preference, my own preference, I'm curious what yours is. My preference in terms of how much I like the game is multiplayer PvP, uh, at a higher player count. Sorry, higher player count at PvP, lower player count P okay, sorry. Higher player count PvP, higher player count PvE, mm -hmm. lower player count PvE, lower player count PvP. That would be my preference order. Meaning a two-player head-to-head game, I'd rather play it competitively, uh, cooperatively. Versus a, if you have more players, I'd rather play a PvP. If we had four people here, yes, player versus player. Yes. If we had three people here, both easily accessible. If yep. we had two, I'm playing co-op with you. Correct. That's yep. why I stand there. And so, it's not that this game is not good. I feel like two. I, I feel like it was clearer the way I said it. But it was clearer the way you said it. I'm not sure. I'm Immaterial. not entirely sure. Immaterial. We can edit that out. We do this on this channel. So no, it, you don't. Yeah, not in the slightest. So I would say if you are someone who is looking at this game as a two-player experience, if you're looking for a skirmish game, based on my own limited plays as a two-player, which is one player, two-player, mm -hmm. I'd prefer to pull Super Fantasy Brawl off the shelf. But if you're looking to get this game out of two-player experience, you want to know whether it'll still be fun head-to-head, -head, whether it'll still give you a cooperative head-to-head -head that's fun, then yeah, 100% is still fun. Less fun than higher player counts, still fun. That's going to be that. Yeah. Anything else? Because I have one more. Anything else that makes this game potentially wrong for... Yeah. Players. Well, mine is actually something I really liked. Yes. I, I, let's see if this matches up. There is the opportunity to be mean to someone. Yes, sort of. I have it. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Ganging up on the leaders. The thing that we enjoy. Ganging up on the leader. Yeah, but yep. we love that. We love it. Yeah. Because because if I have 80 health and everyone else has 30, of Which course you, you should target me. I that believe, is how it I works. I believe you were closer to 160 and we had, you, had, you had coordinated all yeah. of us to get us down to like 30 left. Yeah, it was. And we pummeled you. Yeah. And that was fun. That is part of the game. If you or someone in your game group specifically does not enjoy the experience of being the focus yes. for a moment. Well, first of all, problem easily solved. Never be the player with the most health. Just get the attack the fair. whole way through. That's, That's easy it's enough. an easy solution. I suppose it's not a criticism. Then. It's not. It's, yeah. but, but generally, these kinds of games, you have to understand that when you play a game that has the ability to attack the leader, you cannot make yourself the target. So if you're playing this strategically, sit there, sure. take damage, be part of the, the, the low crew, and then, be in the fray. Then, then, then at the end of the game, you'll be fine. Maybe. Or you might die along the way. That I still won. You still won. But very much so, while what we included this in our what we liked category, that aspect of that teamwork, that collaboration, that being at attacking the strongest player is a lot of fun to just mm. take them out. But if you don't like that, if you are someone who's like, well, I'm the strongest player, I should be winning, not being attacked by everyone, I mean, that's it's going to happen. I guess play cooperatively, maybe. Yeah. That's going to be the last thing I have for problems for others. Lastly, be a final thoughts and scoring. Final thoughts. Oh, yeah, we do do scoring. We do scoring. Interesting. Which I Final... forgot right now, so I didn't prep my score, but I'm pretty sure I know what to do. Final thoughts and scoring. Uh, mm -hmm. I was skeptical, skeptical mm -hmm. of this game. I yeah. initially was. I, I approached it. Arena games are always things that I want to be better than they turn out to be. Yes. Uh, I have sought out a multitude of them. I have found some that I enjoy. I find Hoplomachus is fun as a solo experience. It's a little, you know, integrated puzzle with a theme that I enjoy. Super Fantasy Brawl has been the recent one yes. last year that has shown because of the way it, it emphasizes powers, abilities, and positioning, positioning as opposed to just punch each other. Yeah. Uh, unmatched, I find so boring. Yes. Uh, and so, no, really, no, I exactly. do. I've, I've I talked do. About it. You get close to each other, and then you go, eh. You play cards. You yeah. play cards. You're like, okay, we close the distance, play card, play card. We're going to get 14 this... people in the comments down below telling us how little <laughs> we understand that game. I, it's okay. You're right. We I do not no, appreciate no, the I'm strategy. sure I don't understand that game. Yes. This one, for what I look for in a in a... Co you know, in a in an experience, in an arena combat experience, mm -hmm. I was skeptical when James reached out saying, "Hey, I want you to show it off." Yeah. Because I wanted to be able to celebrate it, and I was worried that it wouldn't perform because... like many of them haven't. Yeah. This is probably my favorite. Interesting. So yeah, I don't disagree. I don't disagree. For sure. me, in terms of for me, the closest head-to-head -head competitor in my collection of a game that fits this genre, being very different in its implementation, but to give me the same feeling, is going to be the game we talked about already, Super Fantasy Brawl. For myself, sure. I would rank them very similarly right now. I believe this has a potential to grow higher. Here's the reason why I'd yeah. say Bloodstone right now is my favorite. Because? Super Fantasy Brawl beats it in one area. Yes. Head-to-head, -head, two-player. But this does more. 100%. This does everything so else. So that's where I am. So where I am with the game is, if I'm looking for that, the head-to-head -head experience in Super Fantasy Brawl... And I'm not even convinced that yeah. it beats it in two-player. Oh, it's, I think it does. I think it's... Head? 
Okay, so when I get the final copy of this game, because I guarantee I you think, I'm getting this game on Kickstarter. I think, they're, I think they're right there for me right I now. I will eventually do a play this, not that, one of my comparison yeah. style videos between the two. It'll be a fair comparison. When it eventually comes. When it eventually comes. Because I want to wait for that. Because right now, where I am right now, is for me, this game is an 8 out of 10. And I believe okay. it'll be a 9 out of 10. I believe that pretty surely with the what the end game gives me, yeah. the vari sure. variability of heroes, the variability of bosses, I'm pretty sure it'll be a 9. Right now, there are enough small little things. I'm not wrong. 8's great. There are enough small little things that I'm like, I, I kind of want to see a Let's little see. more from the you, you're working I with a prototype. See, yeah. yeah. What, what I said you're working with a prototype. Working with a prototype, 100%. Yeah. So if they clean up a few of these things, whatever it is, maybe the ability to get a little bit more interesting. I don't I don't have specific concrete examples, but I really like this. I'm pretty sure it'll end up as a 9 out of 10 in terms of my collection. It's not a 10 out of 10 for me because at the end of the day, as much and it never, has no chance of being. Same way as Fantasy Brawl has no chance of being. Because at the end of the day, this style of game for me, I still like the meaty experience that a Blood Rage gives me, that a uh, you okay. know, heavy Euro like Brass Birmingham will give me. It's just a different type it's of game. It's a different game, type of though. game. Yeah, it's just but such a different... When a game has less of a focus on winning, on, on the strategy, not the winning, sure, sure. and a little more focus on the fun, it does get a tiny ding for me. That's fine. Yeah, that's just the way yeah. I'm, I'm looking at games. And yeah. so to me, the, the, the zone this is aiming for is that 8 or 9. And I think this will be a 9. But I think I need to see the final game to see. Yeah, so I don't, we don't, I don't do numbers. I only started doing numbers because I don't. my experience and opinion is clearly evident that I like this game and deal with it. Yeah. But if you want a numerical value assigned to it, it's an eight right now and maybe a nine. Might be a nine. Uh, I do bourbons though. Bourbons. Yes. Uh, How many bourbons is this? This for me, for me is a five out of five bourbons. That's a pretty. It solid is. Bourbon. That is not a ten out of ten game scale. I don't have a game scale. I don't know what a game scale would yeah. be. But I enjoy this enough, and it is so focused on the fun and the, the table presence and the people that are around you, that if I sat down with this game and this game alone, I would still be enjoying it and would play it long enough to be at five bourbons. I want to give context here. This is a worthwhile context to give. Because <laughs> if you've watched my videos and you're on my channel, so hopefully you've watched my videos, and if you haven't, subscribe down below. Yeah. I do fun videos all the time. Uh, you will already know that Inish is my number three favorite game of all time. Yes. Okay. And doing a game of Inish yesterday, it was on the table, it was uh -huh. set up, we were in the middle of Inish, I kind of just looked up at you and I was like, I wouldn't mind playing Bloodstone right now. Yes, and I, I, I was thinking the same exact thing. And, and it's not that I don't like Inish, I you love Inish. You said it, and I said, I was thinking the same thing. I wasn't a big fan of it. But, you're, but you're, not, you're not an Inish person, that's, mean, that's meaningless for you. <laughs> for me, that statement means something. And it's not that I don't like Inish, I love Inish, Inish is my third favorite game of all time. But I had just played Bloodstone the night before, and it's like, I kind of want to roll hordes of dice and slap you upside mm. your head a few more times, because that sounds fun to me. So that I think that should give you context to where this game yeah. lies to me. On, I want to play it. On a bourbon level, five out of five. Five out of five bourbons. That's yeah. going to be officially... You should get, like, a stamp, like, some of those, like, logos on the box. Crack Love gives this game five out of five bourbons. <laughs> I don't think that's how that uh, works. James Hudson, but... you can throw that on the box. Uh, you heard it here first. Five <laughs> out of five bourbons yeah. from Quack Love. Uh, whatever the case, if you are excited for this game, you're right. Yeah, that's where we are. And that's basically it. That will be a wrap. Uh, until next time. You realize time, uh, people are going to be calling us out for being way too positive on a game I that we enjoy. Care. No, I, I understand. I understand. But for those of you that have made it to this point and you're very grumpy on the other end saying, oh, they got a free prototype and they're going to, they're so positive. Ask comments, ask questions yeah. down below. If you want answers, he responds to nearly everything. Basically. Along and, with that. And again, to be clear, if it, you don't like RNG dice rolling sure, games, I sure. don't think this is changing your mind. Yeah, no, This of is that not. style of game. But if you like the concept, if you don't mind dice, and if you're looking for a good skirmish game, this is that. Yeah. Is it going to be for everyone? Absolutely not. Is it cool and fun to play? Uh, yeah, it kind of But is. I'm just saying, we're happy to answer. Our, if you don't feel like we've covered something that you're curious about specifically, yeah. I'm happy to answer it to whatever degree I am able. 100%. That's basically it. Until next time, I am Alex. Your turn. Oh. Until next time, Quack. I am Alex. Mm, I missed it. Do again. Until next time, I am Alex. And <laughs> have a good one. <laughs> <laughs>